Okay, we're back with a big time special guest, Mr. Riley McDonald. Riley is a former, this is going to be a long one, Cochise Community College, Douglas College, Waldorf University. Um, played with me in Quebec for a little bit, and then he played for the Dornbin Indians in Austria. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and Australia. And Australia, yeah, that's right. What positions did you play? Uh, I was like a catcher third base, kind of flip-flop each year, but I would say growing up I was definitely a catcher with the Twins. For the but you pitched, you pitched in Austria too, right? I like to think I could pitch when you, I was in Austria. Pitched, you yeah. pitched. You're a super utility guy. Yeah. Um, again, just have, being able to play all those positions gives you a chance to make a bunch of different teams and expand um, your career a couple more years. Um, so, yeah. One of the best coaches in uh, BC for sure. He's the head coach of the North Shore Junior Twins. You got the home opener tomorrow, or yeah. not home opener, season opener? Yeah, season opener with White Rock. So I think the kids are going to do good this year. Feeling good, about good the team? team? Yeah, we're feeling good. They put in the work and just a bunch of good kids. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I helped out with Riley's team a little bit in the winter, and the work ethic was there. They were they were all locked in the whole off season. So should be a pretty good year for them. Let's get going here. We talked about tea routine quite a bit on this channel, uh, but it's good to hear different voices. So, Riley, what do you like to focus on on tea when you first start out? I think for me in high school, I wasn't a very good hitter, and by that, like, I always had potential, but I kind of had a funky swing with a hitch. So, for me, after like, I didn't really get good at hitting until I was 20 years old at Waldorf, and I kind of I had to redshirt when I went there due to credits, and I took that whole year and took a step back and kind of did the research uh, myself, which like a lot of kids is what we tell them. Like, you got to be your own hitting coach. Yeah, you can be the best player uh, in the world. You can have the best coaches, but if you don't understand how your body works and what the best people are doing, then it's going to be really hard to succeed. So I kind of went, I was a guy who was really steep down to the zone, which I think is kind of like the opposite of how kids are now. Kids are usually too far up now. Big time. When we were taught, it was like, down to the ball down to the ball now it's like up 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 so for me i had to kind of go back and think way more up so for me my first thing is always kind of rhythm spread it out and kind of get into my load and then it just take the lower half out of it and just feel my hands going in that direction i want to feel like my back hip is like coiled in there and i'm in a good position using that tripod almost feeling in your foot and then just kind of letting it snap through yeah yeah and like smooth and rhythm right rhythm 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 go nice i think i see a lot of kids who are always on the tee and they're always just jump swing and they have like no real plan to slow it down yeah nice. yeah i think after i do that like my first thing was always high tee away yeah where i would take this and just work on hitting line drives. Like I've never, there is a time and place when you're warmed up to swing and think a little deeper, like your game swing where you're trying to elevate the ball. Oh, little mas. What? So I haven't swung that much in the last month. So I hit the other day and I was rolling over everything. So I'm just trying to stay back to that left center gap a bit more today but I'll let it eat a little bit on machine or BP, whatever we do. Yeah, I think this is my uh, second time swinging. I've swung <laughs> like four times yeah. in the last year. Easy, easy 98. Easy 98. Here's 100. Oh, I missed it. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why you get big and strong like Shohei Ofani. Exactly. So you can easily hit 97. Oh, roll me. One more. That's a piss missile. Okay. I don't want to hit with you no more. <laughs> <laughs> First round of front toss, what's your goal? What's your, what's your plan? I think like this is my approach pretty much. I'm never thinking pull side. Oppo for me was anything up the middle, anything left center gap to center field. For me was Oppo. I was a big pull hitter. With that being said, like I didn't think pull side like ever. The farthest I would think if a guy had, you know, good spin, guys with two seam, I'd have to think up the middle. Like typically things that run away from me, like sliders, 
uh, lefty two seams and stuff, I'm always thinking the other way. I would never think pull or else I would just get way too out front. So like, especially. And totally like if, if that slider is coming in like this and you're thinking pull and it's coming down like this, your barrel is just, you're going to miss that ball or just hit it off the end of the bat. And you're, you're never going to be in the path long enough. But if you're thinking a little bit more oppo, that slider's coming down here, you can stay on that pitch and drive it the other way, drive it up the middle. Or you yeah. can pull it if you're early. And like I was, I was a better curveball hitter than I was uh, fastball. So like me thinking oppo just allowed me to kind of sit a little back, sit a little back, and get my barrel kind of out front where you want it to be without trying to push the hands out there. Yeah. Thinking low line drives at the second baseman. Oh. That was nice. That's where I want to be. Nice. Oh, that's okay. That's a great swing. That's where I'm trying to live right now. Yeah. First couple, I'm like, no matter what, I'm hitting it on the ground. Then I can start to elevate a little bit, but nothing higher than that off front toss. Listen to that. Nice. Good swing. That's too high. I'm thinking the same thing here. Some low line drives to start. Oppo and then lift it a bit. Not that either. That. Oh, that's nice swing. That. Jesus. Easy 102, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Take that, Eric Sim, you nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Sim, why won't you challenge me? Yeah. You scared? This is the king of independent yeah, ball. Yeah, king of indie ball. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's horrible. One more. <sighs> Easy 100. I'm just staying middle now where I'm not too worried about pitch location where I'm kind of trying to hit it where it is. And I'm still thinking that like low approach where it's like maybe my first at bat or my first round, I'm thinking like low kind of uh, at the second baseman's feet. Now I'm kind of like raising it up above the pitcher, but not by very much. The way my swing is, is like if I think like that, like I'm going to hit line drive. So I'm kind of Hitting it where the outfielders are playing me, I want a line where they don't even have to move. Uh, no. See, when I do that and I take a bad swing like that, a lot of kids will just, I get it when we have BP, it's fast, right? It's happening, but you got to find something to reset yourself. It's ground, it's adjustments as you go. So now I'm thinking even lower, so I've yanked a couple, where now I'm thinking like pitcher's feet just to get back to where I want to feel. I think that's something that they miss out on too is like making adjustments pitch to pitch in BP instead of like keep, keeping the same swing and the same approach because that didn't work the first couple. So now you got to change it to get back to where you need to be. Yeah. Okay, hitters make adjustments game to game. Good hitters make adjustments at, at bat, bat to at bat. bat. And great hitters make adjustments pitch to pitch. Yeah. And that goes with BP too. What? <laughs> Oh boy. Same thing with me here, just going right back up the middle, trying to hit the top of the L screen and then hopefully work my way up if I can do it. Oh, that's a tough pitch, but that ball's crap. 103. That's what I want to do right there. 104. I, pro I promise you guys it's not this easy to hit this <laughs> that hard. I, I missed that one. Oh, man. That was such a bad thing. Yeah, I like taking a round of like inside pitches just to make sure my like rotation's there. I just feel like it's a lot easier to rotate fast on that inside pitch. It's not about like the result necessarily. It's just trying to get my body a little bit quicker and yeah, when I, when spin I'm a bit faster. When I'm doing inside like something where I'm actually trying to drive it. Yeah. And like now that I'm warmed up, like, I was a guy who I hit the ball far. So like I obviously had to practice hitting home runs to a certain extent. Yeah. Where it's like. You, you need know, to have that swing in the arsenal. So when you yeah. get that pitch, it's like your body knows what to do with so, a 2 3 one count. Yeah, this is like 2 3 The way I think of it is like anytime you don't have two strikes, like you're trying to get a hack off. Yeah. Oh, pop up. Oh, boy. Oh. Ah, tough one there. Sorry. 
It's good. Inside pitch, double down the line. Eight double, time. Eight time. Did you? You had to have. Oh. That's got to go. Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, it left. It left. It's still. Oh, I just missed that, but that felt better. That was a good swing. Oh, jam me. Oh, that's it. There we go. Yeah, a couple bunts. Oh. Oh, still got it. Oh, my God. Oh, look at me. The big man can bunt. All right, I'm good. Like, when me and you were growing up, we didn't have as many. There was obviously good coaches, but there wasn't. This came about IP when we were like 16. Me and you used to just be able to come in here and throw front toss with ourselves and kind of have a plan. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of kids now don't even know how to front toss. No. It's like stuff no, they're, like they're that. Like, like, they're like this. They're like. Yeah. Like if you, if you if want you to be, get better at baseball, you need to learn how to be, throw BP and uh, throw front toss. You're, eventually when you get playing college and you come back, you hit with guys who are back home like. You, trust me, when you go to college, you don't have any money, so you better learn how to front toss. <laughs> right. There we go. Right. Nice. Oh, pull side yank. Oh. Nope. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, top hand. One more. Oh, one more. Fuck. Oh, my Lanta. That ball is crushed. Nice swing. There we go. Great swing. Yeah. Just miss it a bit? Yeah, just missing. Great swing, though. I just like, I don't have that. Oh, it's just lack of reps, right? You'll, your swing is there. The timing's there. It's just finding that barrel and like figuring out where the barrel is at, in time and space. The barrel's a little different than the slow pitch bats. We use. <laughs> Good swing. Hundo? There we go. There's a hundo. I was just quick with it. I saw it deep and I kind of, I was in the zone here and it was, felt effortless off yeah, the hand. Yeah, big time. Nice. <sighs> But I didn't figure that out until late in my career. And again, like I'm always thinking the other way. Yeah. Oh, muscle. Nice. There we go. Love a swing right there. A lot of kids are so mentally like weak where they'll, I'm not saying every kid, but we were the same way for sure. But, like you have a couple bad swings in BP and it's just like. Well, it's, at the end of the day, it's BP. I mean, I had days where I had the best BP in my life and went 0 for 4 with 3Ks, and I had some shitty BPs, but I went 4 for 4. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's all just, mental, man. Yeah, and you're just trying to get your work in. It's not all about the results. It's more about just getting ready and feeling good for the game. That's my bad. I'll try to live middle here. No, I, I don't mind that. I want it all over the place, kind of. Oh, oh, jammed. Oh, and then I get jammed again. Oh, my God. See, like that one, I was trying to think a bit more pull. That's what I have to think to like, if I'm late like that, I just need to, it's not, for me, it's not contact point. It's just like, okay, I'm going to try to pull this one. And then it, everything just kind of times up better. And, you know, it makes sense for some guys because then you can release the barrel. Yeah. Where it's like, if you're too awful, guys get like here. That's what it, I'm doing. It's just, I'm not releasing the barrel with the top hand. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking, okay, pull it and get that top hand moving. Oh my god. Come here. Oh I Oh I like machine more more so just to get your eyes used to velo. Totally. Not that you're having you're supposed to have success on every pitch, but if you can get used to the velo with your eyes, your body will be able to catch up. Whereas I love like if you just do BP and then step into a game, the guy's throwing ninety five. I liked it for just like the break of pitches. In a game, like I was seeing like 50, 60% off speed. So for me, just to simulate like my barrel, like following that path of the off speed. Yeah. And then I pull side yank. Oh. 
Nice. Good hands there. That's the one I've been working on with a lot of kids, that high pitch. Instead, like, they all collapse on the backside and still try to swing underneath it, like you were saying before. You, your body knows what to do. You know how to get on top of that ball when you see that pitch elevated. Yeah, You've done you it enough times. Like, if you don't do high T, though, you can't do no, that. No, no chance. <laughs> Two. Oh, one more. Oh, I just got tired. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And uh, my top hand is so weak. Oh my god, that ball was a piss missile. Good hands. Coming. Oh, profundo. No, Woo! No, no, no. But I just got to think better this round. Okay. One for Brian, though, where I'm trying to go boom bah. Okay. Yeah! <laughs> One more, Brian. Brian, you got Hold this on. This is going out, I promise. Oh! Ow! Right in the face. Told I needed that. I needed that. Needed to do You it. hit a home run and then hit me right in the face. <laughs> the kids, early in the year, it's like you got to think more the other way as opposed to everybody gets out on the field and wants to see how far they can hit it, but that's not what's going to no. get that timing back. I think it was uh, Miguel Cabrera. There was like a video on him, and he was saying how the first like two months of the offseason, it's everything is opposite field. He does not pull the ball at all. Oh, I get fisted. Oh, boy. Ow. Nice. Oh no. Jesus. <laughs> Pull side, yeah. Tried to go big fly there. Oh. Oh. No power. The thing is, though, without a simulator, like, that is actually just gone. Yeah. Like, these balls are so unjuiced. Yeah. Oh, one more. Oh. Oh. What? Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Uh. Oh. Yes. Oh. That one felt good. Oh, shit. Three, I'm getting exhausted. Yeah. Two. All right. I think it's safe to say we're both out of hitting shape. It's a lot easier when you do it every day. It's also easier at slow pitch when you take four swings and jog the bases. Yeah. What's like your biggest, what's the best piece of advice you ever got to get yourself to the next level? I think, um, well, for me, like I was a big fan of like Josh Donaldson and when he was like that 2016 Blue Jays team and like this interview with him kind of stood out to me when he just talked about like the onus was it was on him to make the jump where he like wasn't he saw the way his career was going and it wasn't going the way he wanted it. And he did something about it and changed it and kind of listened to himself more than he did others, which you got to take advice from coaches and take pieces from different people. And you got to put that together and make a plan yourself. So just doing it on your own and actually putting in the work. Like I think the thing with me and you not to like toot our own horns, but like me and you worked harder than like 95, 99% of all baseball players just because we were lucky we had this place and we worked here. But like a lot of kids, they don't have that drive and work ethic to like really get after it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I think as far as like the coaching part, there's gonna, you're going to have a ton of people trying to change your swing, but it's sort of up to you to listen and be respectful, obviously. But t like you said, take pieces from each coach but you know your body better than anybody. You know what feels good. You know when you try something and you and it feels like a great swing, that's going to click for you. Um, so, yeah, take advice from coaches and listen and learn. But not everything's going to apply to you. And kind of pick and choose who you really listen to and who you really trust as a hitting coach. 
Um, there's a million hitting coaches out there. For me with the Mariners, I had two hitting coaches that I would go to. One was more just a confidence boost that I would get in the cage and try to just be confident after and go into the game with that level of confidence that I could succeed. And the other coach I had was more for mechanical stuff and more for approach. Um, so those were the two guys I kind of leaned on. But again, yeah, like you said, like just you have to have that extra drive and extra gear in you if you want to get to the next level. Um, and it's not just in here. Like it's in the weight room too. Yeah, like it's eating, it's sleeping, it's weight room, it's sacrificing – some stuff outside of baseball in your personal life to become a better baseball player if you really want it. Very good. Good video. Good video. <laughs>